Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today as we discuss the different ways in which Asset Manager can be leveraged to optimize the management of mobile devices as well as lines of service. My name is Anu Papu. I work with Configure Consulting across our IT operations practices, including asset management, config management, IT service management, enterprise monitoring, and automation. Presenting with me today from our Configure Consulting team is Lee Chilko. Lee, do you want to, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, thank you, and good morning, or good morning, everyone. My name is Lee Chilcote, and I am a senior ITAM uh, implementation specialist with Configure Consulting, and I've been working with this particular application, uh, HP Asset Center, Asset Manager, uh, for approximately 17 years. Okay, great. Thanks, Lee. Getting started here, let's just run through some quick webinar guidelines. Please keep in mind that this webinar is being recorded and that all lines are currently muted. We'd also ask that you not put your phone on hold or switch to another line uh, while in this session. You'll see on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, there's a question manager where you can post any questions that you may have throughout the presentation. Feel free to use that feature, and at the end of the discussion, we'll have uh, a Q&A session to review questions that have been posted. Moving into today's content, um, just wanted to start out by giving you a quick overview of Configure Consulting. We're an HP software partner focused on delivering software services and high-impact solutions around the five uh, practice areas that you see listed in the middle of the screen here. We've worked with hundreds of organizations across North America, and uh, quite often our emphasis is on leveraging existing investments and existing processes and tools that the organization is using. Uh, to deliver incremental value that makes a big difference. That brings us into today's discussion, uh, which is based on the same principle and uh, coming from our asset management practice. Today we're going to be talking about how asset manager can be used uh, to improve the management of mobile devices within an organization. In terms of game plan, we're going to start our discussion by talking about some of the scope and tactical considerations around managing mobile devices from that asset perspective. We'll also discuss some of the key ways in which asset manager can uh, address those practical considerations or requirements. There are four uh, specific modules that we'll be highlighting today, um, both in the presentation as well in Lee's demo. This is the portfolio, contracts, procurement, and finance modules. Asset Manager as a whole, across all the modules, offers a broad range of capabilities um, to support the management of mobile devices. So we've chosen to focus on these four because we feel that they hit home um, for a lot of the questions that different uh, organizations ask us and a lot of the use cases that we most commonly see. As mentioned, Lee will be doing a live demonstration of HP Asset Manager, showcasing the modules uh, highlighted here, as well as analytics uh, generally across mobile device management. As he does this, you're going to see a little bit of what um, our team here at Configure is really good at, which is tailoring dashboards and reports to the specific roles and personnel um, within an organization. It's really a day in the life perspective, and uh, I, I think that'll come across in a big way as you demo. Following the demo, we'll then wrap up by talking about the building blocks that a lot of organizations already have in-house that can be brought together under the asset management umbrella to support efficient ma management of mobile assets, as well as their related contracts. As mentioned, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so please uh, use that question manager feature and post any questions that you may have uh, throughout the discussion. So what you see here is a bit of a funny quote that we felt really hits the nail on the head for the purpose of this uh, webinar today. The challenge with mobile devices truly is just that they're mobile. Unlike other assets that are traditionally in one place and relatively static, mobile devices are you know, certainly easier to lose, either by users in day-to-day -day operations or through just the course of employee turnover and organizational changes. Also, as we all know, they tend to have a shorter lifespan. 
This is both due to how quickly this technology becomes outdated and needs to be replaced, but also how easy a lot of mobile devices are uh, to break, given their handheld nature. Next, the cost. With mobile inventory, it's really important to track both the physical device costs as well as service costs and other contract, um, contractual costs. Aggregated across an organization, this can represent certainly a significant expense, and especially, as we all know, that expense coming from those service contracts and service costs. The next point you see here is an important one. Increasingly, enterprise software is being adapted for mobile purposes. Uh, in fact, Asset Manager, the subject of today's discussion, also had a mobile app. This um, trend towards uh, mobile applications for en uh, enterprise uh, software is very quickly becoming a standard. And with that, we've got to adapt from a software license management as well as a compliance perspective. And what you'll see in Lee's demonstration is with an asset manager, we're able to track and view not only um, your general attributes of a mobile device and um, your related contracts, but also we're able to report on the applications installed on those devices and have that feed into software asset management processes. And as you see here, the, the scope of you know this discussion on mobile devices can be pretty broad. Some of the common ones listed here, phones, tablets, printers, point-of-sale devices, but certainly there's many more um, and many more industry-specific ones uh, across, you know, healthcare, finance, and so on. So here you see a high-level overview of Asset Manager. Asset Manager works by bringing together inventory information from the key sources listed on your right with the appropriate business context as you see listed on the left. These two data sets are reconciled against each other to deliver very high impact analytics across inventory, utilization, total cost of ownership, expenses, as well as other contract implications. These analytics can be consumed in the form of web-based dashboards. That's what you're going to see demoed in uh, Lee's uh, section here as well as reporting across all standard formats, alerts, and automated notifications upon reaching critical thresholds. Again, as part of the configure consulting approach, um, we take it very seriously tailoring these uh, outputs to meet organizational use cases very closely. An example would be um, setting up a notification when a contract is up for renewal within the next 30 days or 60 days or whatever uh, time period makes sense. Similarly, you know, there's alerts and notifications that can be um, configured to give you a heads up upon critical utilization uh, points. So let's say, you know, from the software perspective, 90% utilization of, of a given license. That's important information to have in a proactive way. Moving to the next slide here, we see some of the specific ways that App Manager can add value to the processes around managing mobile devices as well as wireless service. First off, general asset tracking. We've discussed some examples of this already. Truly, being able to see a 360-degree view of an asset that includes the device itself, the SIM card, the phone number, as well as applicable contracts or terms of, ser terms of service can be very, very valuable. Additionally, Visibility across the asset life cycle can help mitigate some of the tactical considerations that we discussed at the beginning of this presentation. Additionally, when we're able to tie in uh, existing processes and applications to deliver integrated workflows around mobile inventory, this is a key driver towards um, cost savings and efficiencies. This is also one of the asset manager's strengths in this area, its ability to not only deliver uh, this kind of value from an end-to-end -end life cycle perspective natively, but also to plug and play quite nicely with other applications or tool sets. We'll discuss that in uh, a little more detail towards the end of the presentation. Quite generally though, Asset Manager helps organizations understand what they have, where those assets are, how those assets are being utilized, and by whom. And in today's discussion, as mentioned, 
we're going to be focusing on the four modules of Asset Manager highlighted here. Moving to the next slide, we'll look at some of the specific ways that these modules contribute uh, towards our objectives. The portfolio module facilitates the reporting and tracking of general asset attributes um, and features. This can include make, model, in-service dates, status, etc. Aggregated across an organization or grouping of assets, this can really help us understand, again, how our assets are being used and where they are, um, and also what our portfolio of assets is comprised of. With the contracts module, we're able to identify and report on all the contracts supporting the mobile asset. This can include uh, service, support, leasing, maintenance, and, and many other contract types. The procurement module uh, helps to identify efficiencies in the early stages of the asset life cycle. One of the key features of this, and, and Lee's going to show you this in his demo as well, um, and it's the ability to do what we call reservations. This is, you know, using data within the tool to allocate stock inventory to fulfill internal requests prior to making purchases. Additionally, we're able to save costs by comparing pricing across different vendors uh, of mobile devices and services in a systematic framework um, across key suppliers when generating estimates and making orders and so on. And finally, the finance module. This is the one that, you know, understandably helps us see how much we're spending on our mobile assets. This can include total cost of ownership, you know, either per asset, across models, or by some other um, criteria, as well as metrics for budgeting, forecasting, and generally making informed decisions around the management of mobile assets. So with that, I'm going to pass the ball over to Lee, who's going to walk you through uh, the demo outline that you see here, and then deliver the live demonstration of Asset Manager uh, for the purpose of managing mobile devices. Thank you, Anu. Um, what you see displayed on your screen at this moment is the home page for, or the login page for HP Asset Manager uh, web care application. And I'm going to log in with a user that has been created with administrative, administrative privileges because, as you know, Asset Manager is a role-based type application. And behind each of those roles, there are profiles that are assigned to each user in the, in the uh, database. And those users have specific rights and privileges within the system. As you can see here, because I'm an administrative user, I have access to administrative privileges. On the first page here, this is called the home page, and it has um, several widgets, what they call widgets. They're like dashboards. And these widgets are um, used primarily for an IT type uh, manager. Uh, for example, the contracts to expire in the next 30 days. Um, they're all interactive. You can actually hover over top of the, each one, and if you were to click on one of them, it would actually take you to a detailed list of the information that's contained within this particular widget. Uh, the widgets are, you're able to add additional widgets to your screen, customize it to the way you want it. There are several that are out of the box, and you can just add these to your home page. Or if you have administrative privileges or need somebody to create another one, you find someone with administrative privileges and you can create additional widgets here. Um, something I'd like to mention before I move on is that um, we recently implemented Asset Manager for a large rail transportation company in Canada. And they are currently successfully tracking their mobile devices using Asset Manager. Um, at this point, now I would like to go to a uh, mobile dashboard and show you some of these, some of the things that are available. And here we go. What you're going to see here are, are some dashboards that were created. Um, some are out of the box, and some have been specifically created uh, by uh, users within 
uh, the application. You can see, once again, they are also interactive. Um, for example, mobile devices like Cost Center, you can see here that the administrative department or Cost Center has two. The IT department has 16 mobile devices assigned, et cetera. Over here, we have mobile device um, total cost of ownership by the different models, and et cetera. These are all, as I said, they're all interactive. Now, I'm going to actually move on to a mobile device, and I could click on it over here, but I'm going to show you another way to get there, and that's by using the search bar on the side of upper right-hand corner of the screen and just click on mobile after typing in mobile device, mobile device here. And I'm going to see here that it presents a list of the actual mobile devices that are in the uh, database. And I'm going to show you some of the detail here. Um, as you can see here on the general tab, it shows the uh, code or the um, what you call it, the asset tag. The type of equipment is a smartphone. Um, you can see here that it's in use. It shows the in-service date, um, the location of the user, who happens to be Susan Lucell. On the hardware tab, we have some more specific data that um, pertains to the actual device. It shows the type of chip that's in it, the CPU speed, the memory, and any apps or BIOS uh, tag information that is available for this. On the OS tab, you can see that the type of I, uh, iOS it has and the browser that happens to be on this. And on the application tab, you can see any applications that happen to have been uh, installed on this device. Moving to the SIM card tab, you can see there's a micro SIM, and it actually shows the phone number and the service provider. And to get a little more detail on the SIM, you just click on the phone number. And on the general tab, once again, it shows the uh, general information about this particular device. Uh, going to the SIM tab, it shows additional information like the phone number, the ICC ID, which is the integrated circuit card ID the IMSI, which is the International Mobile Subscriber Identity Number, and any PIN number that you may have assigned to this device for internal security. On the Contracts tab, it will also show the contract that this particular device um, is related to. And on the Cost tab, you'll see the uh, costs that have been generated. Uh, there's a workflow that can run in the background and based on uh, the information you have set up for this uh, particular machine or this particular device, it will actually uh, show the different um, expense lines that have been generated, including the purchase and then any monthly carrier charges, et cetera. And this information is useful in your financial area for things like uh, chargeback or possibly even budgeting if you decide to set up budget. Um, going back to the list, I wanted to show you some uh, statistics that are available for the SIM cards. These are all out of the box. And if I go back to the list of the mobile devices, you'll see that there are additional statistics and reports that are available for um, the different mobile devices that you have set up on your system. Um, moving on to the contract module, I want to uh, actually take you to a contract and show you some of the detail that's actually available on the contract. And I need to go to the last page. You can see that there's several, there's eight pages of contracts in the system. So I'm going to click on this AT&T business agreement. And on the general tab, you can see who the supervisor is or the person responsible for this contract. It shows the nature of the payment, shows the contract number, um, agreement number, the company that you actually have the contract with, as well as the cost type and the cost center, which is used in your financial area. Um, down here you also have 
a uh, validity area that shows the start date of the contract and the den end date of the contract. And there's also a notification period. And Asset Manager has a workflow uh, generator running in the background that will automatically send emails or some type of notification to um, you know pertinent people that are involved with this contract to let them know that, for example, um, three months before this end date, that this contract is going to be coming up for renewal or renegotiation. And every page, you can also add any comments that you might want to add to the uh, to the contract. On the conditions tab, you can list your uh, terms and conditions here, which is also um, something good to know. On the contact tab, you can see the listing of those people who who are also involved in this. You can have a technical contact or a billing contact if there's any type of uh, billing issues that you have questions about, and it also has the billing address. On the assets tab, it shows the assets that are actually, you can see here that the, the SIM cards of these machines um, are actually um, covered by this contract. And over on the documents tab, you can um, actually post or attach the contract physical contract or any other document that is related to this actual contract. Now moving on to the procurement um, side of things, I would like to take a look at a purchase request that has been created for this particular demonstration. And I'm going to go to that and show you some of the detail on that. And on the first page, on the general tab, you can see it has uh, actual requester um, who the user of this thing is going to be himself. It's an internal IT project and it's cell phones for a new data center. And uh, the project that this is under is redesign of the IT areas, the location, when the, um, these are requested for. Also, whenever this is initially uh, entered into the system, it would be in a status of awaiting approval. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've already gone through the approval process and actually given it a technical approval and a financial approval. And once again, those um, personnel or groups of people um, have received emails and told that they had particular tasks that they needed to do with an asset manager, and those tasks were to approve or, or deny or possibly suspend this particular uh, issue here. Um, on the composition tab, you can see what I'm actually ordering in this uh, request. You can see that there are, we have the 3 i and an iPhone 4, and it also shows the total cost of what this request is going to be. And on the allocation tab, it shows uh, the cost type and the cost center that is uh, involved in this particular um, request. Jumping up to the actions tab and moving on to the next step, the next step could possibly be to um, create a quote or an estimate or an actual purchase order. But what I want to do is before that, I want to take a look in the stock room and see if there's anything that's available in our stock room so we don't have to actually purchase that item. So I'm going to reserve items for this particular request. I'll click on Next. And it shows the three different types of mobile devices that I'm actually going to be ordering. Um, you can do this one at a time, and I'll show you how this works. For example, um, I want to check and see if there's any iPhone 6s in our stock room. Now, if I left this field blank, it would be um, it would check all the stock rooms that you have set up in, in your or for your organization. But in this case, I happen to know that this one is from the San Mateo site, so I know it's the IS Reserve stock room. So I'm going to select that one and take a look and see if we have anything local. And then I'll just click on 
reports on the same model. And if there's any, oh, good, there's two. You can see that there are two. So all you'd have to do is click uh, check mark on each of those. And you can see that it's going to reserve those in that stock room for up to 90 days. And then all you need to do is click on the reserve the selected asset. And those items would then be reserved. And then whenever you move forward in the procurement process to place your order, you're actually only ordering one new iPhone 6 as opposed to three. Uh, lastly, about how the uh, that the system will actually keep track of the history of the um, As a next step, we wanted to talk to you about the different ways that existing investments um, or existing applications or systems in-house can be brought under the asset manager umbrella uh, to really, you know, uh, address some key use cases. You see um, asset managers certainly in the middle of this diagram and all around it, some of the common types of integrations that um, can be done either to Asset Manager or from Asset Manager. As the Asset Manager solution, uh, as we implement it, uses HP Connected uh, as a dedicated integration engine. Connected, for those who aren't familiar, Connected has out-of-the-box uh, mapping for um, integrations between many different uh, standard enterprise applications, as well as it facilitates integrations uh, pulling in CSV, ad hoc databases, and so on. That's a powerful tool in that nature. We use Connected uh, quite often to, as I mentioned, bring tools underneath the asset management umbrella and to, to deliver on the integrated processes or integrated workflows that are required um, to be meaningful within an organization. With mobile devices specifically, there are a few different processes where uh, leveraging your existing investments can really help streamline asset management processes. Let's start with requests. 
Often requests can be done either in the service desk, a dedicated request or self-service portal, um, or some other platform. It can be done in that platform, approved uh, right there or approved separately, and then uh, once approved, processed in um, an enterprise application like SAP, Oracle, something, uh, you know, one of those uh, finance applications, finance and procurement. Asset Manager has the ability to pull in data from these processes. Um, so, for instance, to pull in data about a request or handle requests natively within the tool, um, ensure that the approvals are done and that there's a necessary audit trail, which can be very important given the security nature of mobile devices. And also, ensure that things, uh, features like what Lee showed you, including reservations, um, are used to optimize the available resources. As the manager on the procurement side, as I mentioned, also the ability to either run procurement processes uh, independently or work with the platforms that are already being used in-house um, for the necessary coordination across asset classes. But of course, you know, when we're talking about mobile devices, we've got the ability to be very granular and make, model, um, and having a centralized platform uh, to manage the contract terms uh, or the terms of service across the broad range of uh, assets we're discussing here. We've also got the ability to pull in uh, data from different sources of inventory information. This can include uh, HP's Universal Discovery, uh, which has the ability to discover mobile devices within the network. It can also include um, mobile, the applications for uh, a lot of the major vendors of mobile devices, like the BlackBerry Enterprise Servers. What we very commonly see uh, in terms of bringing in data into Asset Manager for inventory consolidation is spreadsheets that suppliers provide. Spreadsheets outlining what are the devices that you purchased, what are the related contracts, who are the necessary contacts, phone numbers, and so on. And that's a big one. Um, a lot of organizations handle those spreadsheets independently, and that can be a painful process. Pulling those into Asset Manager helps enforce uh, good governance, and a systematic framework for review and management uh, across a lot of those terms. So we hope we've demonstrated that for the purpose of mobile device management as well as asset management across the asset classes. Uh, asset Manager facilitates uh, the ability to integrate with existing processes, systems, and workflows. There are you know, certain key considerations and uh, quick wins around pulling in contracts. The Active Directory integration is a very common one for getting that asset user or owner information, as well as the broad range of repositories uh, for mobile device information. Moving to the next slide, I'd like to share with you an overview of Configure Consulting's Asset Management Assessment Workshop. If you've heard what we've uh, presented today and felt like it could be relevant to your organization, we strongly encourage you to take us up on this for which um, it is, of course, a no-cost offer where we can work with you to review your existing asset manager implementation, what building blocks uh, your organization has available for you, and then provide guidance around optimizing both asset manager and its available resources for the purpose of um, mobile device and wireless service management. Our team is very much focused on good governance outlining best practices, as well as aligning both tools and processes to meet uh, specific use cases. At this time, we'll take any questions that have been posted. I see we've got three questions here. As we go through these, please feel free to um, post any other questions you may think of. We're happy to cover um, any questions that this group has. So Lee, the first question that we've got here is, what version of Asset Manager was used in the demo? Uh, the version of Asset Manager that is uh, currently installed in our lab is the, the Asset Manager 941. There is a more current version, which is Asset Manager 950, and that is currently being implemented and set up within our lab environment. Okay, great. And if I'm um, if I'm not mistaken, nine five zero has additional uh, capabilities around the web interface and widgets, right? Yes, yeah. yes, it does. Okay, great. 
The next question we've got here is, are the dashboards you showed available out of the box, or did you set them up yourself? If so, what is the level of effort? Well, there's a mix in there. There are several that were out of the box, and there are several that were created um, by CCI specifically. And the level of effort is um, it's not difficult. Um, all you have to understand is um, how a simple query basically is, is needed, and the application has a way of assisting you in setting up your queries to uh, create the different dashboards. Okay. Okay, fair enough. And uh, the next question is, can we have the contracts tied to a phone number instead of SIM card? Well, actually, the uh, if you wanted to actually be on the phone number itself, um, the phone number is stored on the SIM card. So typically, the SIM card is what you would actually attach to the uh, um, contract because the SIM card could actually be moved from um, you know device to device to, to device, and the phone number would remain the same on that SIM card. And that's why, in this instance, we've actually put the SIM card as the asset that the contract is related to. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I believe that that's all the questions we've got today. Uh, thank you everyone for your time and for attending this webinar on mobile device management within HP Asset Manager. Uh, Lee and I are definitely happy to answer any questions you may think of, even following the demo. So please uh, feel free to reach out to us. Also, uh, once you close out of this webinar, you'll see a, a short feedback form that appears. We're happy to receive any feedback you may have on today's session, as well as any ideas you may have uh, for future topics that may be of interest. Thanks, everyone, and have a good day. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.